Yeah. yeah. I like, love it. I which love camera it. am I at? I love it. They right. both looking at you, bro. They both looking at me, but <laughs> right here. A lot of people will say, well, I don't know how to start. Mm. I don't know what to say. Okay. It all starts with one person making one phone call, one visit to start one conversation. That's all it takes, just one. And that one conversation could just be exactly how you feel. Mm. I have been feeling neglected because mm. I have been feeling frustrated because that's how you started. You just tell that person how you've been feeling and why. And that can open up the room for discussion. And hopefully y'all can have that discussion to build strengthening, strengthening those bonds. Day we're speaking with gravity. We're so grateful for you all to join us. I'm your host, Joshua. Yes, I am Hannah Williams and Terrence Dawkins. Yeah, and we are a family up here, ain't we? Y'all don't it yes. look like we just love each other. We made it to See April. How close we are. <laughs> See how close we are. Yeah, we done made it to April. Look mm -hmm. at that episode four of, of season eight. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to another great one, y'all. Today we're talking about family, talking about strength and family, and Strengthening those family bonds, mm -hmm. um, which is such an important thing. It's important to have people. What is family? I, I think about it. It's important to have people um, who are there for you for support, mm -hmm. right? People who you can lean on, people who you can look to, people that have your back. And sometimes we don't always get that in our family. In our blood family. In our, in our yeah. blood mm -hmm. family, right? And you got some people, they go out here and they, they feel the need to go out here and look for look for family and that can be dangerous in itself mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. you can get with the wrong folks and end up having the wrong type of family mm -hmm. um so what is what is family and why is this thing so important y'all yeah so when i think of family i think of the traditional um nuclear family of two parents and children um but there's also different versions of family so mm -hmm. some one version is um, a single parent household of course, this type of family presents different challenges um, and different strengths and weaknesses compared to a nuclear family. Um, however, that concept of family is so important. So a family um, shares similar values, similar interests. Um, they have a sense of you. They have a sense of unity and being connected with each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, family is. It, it you have like you said the nuclear core family you know mm -hmm. like my my mom my dad um, my brother sister you know aunt uncle whoever that would be in your family but you have the core base family but you also have that extended family mm -hmm. you got that um, cousins that's not cousins mm -hmm. well you got the auntie that's really not an auntie mm -hmm. so um, I had a I think I remember her name was uh, we called her Miss Maggie but she was our uh, our babysitter when my mom went to work, she's family, even though mm -hmm. we're not blood related because she's a part of the, especially in the black community, we have an extended network of people <laughs> that we will pull into our family because they help us in some type of way. Mm -hmm. So Miss Maggie was our babysitter, so she's a part of our family. Mm -hmm. Or we have, you know, our mechanic. Honestly, like if you got you got the mechanic that everybody knows, he might be a part of the family because mm -hmm. he, he's that family friend. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think family is the nuclear family, but also the extended family that is also incorporated into the family unit. And also um, we have blended families. So mm -hmm. when um, two families come together and create a unit um, that offers different challenges in itself that some people um, may consider up front. But as you all blend together, different other challenges um, may be present as well. And as a unit, you all um, are obligated to work through those challenges and work through those issues to become closer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I also want to say, like, a strong part of your individual identity comes from your family. So your family influences you in so many different ways, whether that's political views, religious views, um, your diet. 
your family influences you in so many different aspects. Um, so it's important to understand your identity outside of just yourself, but your family as well. And um, really be very intentional. Be intentional about strengthening the bonds that you have with your relatives and your immediate family. Mm-hmm. What do y'all? What's some? What do y'all think about though? When y'all think about family related to mental health. Mm-hmm. I know this is a mental health podcast. Again, you know, we're, we are a podcast. It's, please don't mistake us for giving giving out services here. Uh, please don't lean on us for that. Go see a therapist. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully something that we say sparks something, uh, something in you to where it is helpful, but also encourages you to take a step forward in your own journey. But, um, but yeah, the, the, the relationship between family and mental health can y'all tell us what that what that relationship like? What is that relationship between family and mental health? The first thing that comes to what my comes mind, to mind brother, yeah. is non-existent. Oh, and I will tell you why. Come on, non-existent because uh, I, especially I speak for my family, but I think also in the black community, we don't really talk about mental health a lot, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. especially within the family uh, unit, because I can remember times where my mom would be sitting at her kitchen table and she'd have her head in her hands and, you know, she'd be crying. And as a kid, I don't know what's wrong. So I said, mom, what's going on? She said, I'm okay. And I asked again, no, I'm okay. Everything's all right. What did she just do? She just told me that even when you're not okay, you're still okay. Mm-hmm. And that yeah, I understand that she is trying to protect me as a kid, but I also think that they taught me to internalize the wrong messages about how to manage and deal with emotions. And I feel like our family unit is where we're supposed to learn those things about Mm -hmm. how to manage emotions, learn about how to interact with other people, how to interact with the world, and honestly learn a lot about ourselves. And when we can't really have those key discussions about mental health with those close people that we consider family, then that's when we start to have furthermore issues and and that could go all the way back to you know how they were raised what Mm -hmm. you know how they uh, interacted with their family members you know parents or siblings or caretakers and it just keeps getting passed on throughout generations so i think what you're seeing is when you have families that don't really talk about mental health or talk about other things and those are called secrets and it causes us to carry these different burdens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to feed back off of that a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. I feel like family is our first safe space. It is the first environment um, where we want to feel safe, where we want to flourish. We want to show other people um, the good and bad to us. Um, However, if you are in a family where you feel unsafe, whether that's physically, emotionally, um, in whatever capacity, then you don't have that vulnerability to be yourself, to express those genuine feelings. Um, Sometimes what that looks like is a child um, that needs some emotional care growing up. Um, They may be told, go in your room, close your door, you know, deal with it by yourself, isolate yourself. Um, That's not a safe space. And then that child can grow up to... This form, um, you know, unhealthy bonds with their relatives simply because they did not have that safe space to express themselves, to be who they really are, um, and to grow and develop as a person. So what's so important to me is honesty within your family bonds. I feel like honesty and being honest with each other um, can can be the starting point to growing those bonds and relationships with your family members. Honesty and communication, mm-hmm. because when we have these secrets that we don't talk about, whether it is, honestly, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Let's say we had a family member who did some type of illegal activity, whether mm-hmm. that's you know drugs or maybe they did commit a sexual assault or something like that. But it's something that so that we don't talk about. Mm-hmm. That is a part of the family history that's had an impact on maybe why they don't associate with this side of the family. Mm-hmm. Or that may have an impact on why they um, have this viewpoint about, you know, uncle Mm -hmm. or auntie or whoever it is, and they don't talk to or associate with this side. So now you have a disconnect in the family, but you don't know why. You just know, I don't 
food with you. Mm-hmm. And that's breaking up the family unit that you have. So when we have these secrets and that we don't talk about, it leaves up with these burdens to carry. And when we have to carry these burdens, after a while it gets so heavy that we don't know how to manage it because the only thing we know how to do is be okay when mm-hmm. we're not okay. And another... Um point to that is that our family is here so that we can feed off of each other um you know our family is here for support so if we're not being honest with the people that we live in the household with um how can we be honest with other people mm-hmm. once we get into relationships and marriages our um professional relationships how can we be our most authentic version of ourselves if we don't even practice that within our hu- within our household um so in my personal experience that looks that Strengthening family bonds looks like showing up as my most authentic self, Mm -hmm. Um, being honest with the people around me, um, and growing in that capacity. And listen, if you are, uh, everybody's in a different place in their walk and their journey. If you are a family member and you got some stuff figured out, you are a little stronger maybe than others when it comes to building these bonds, um, and you can talk about things. You you the one who wants to communicate. Mm-hmm. You gotta be able. You gotta be willing to be an example mm-hmm. for the others. Gotta be willing to be an example and step up and get your family together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get your family together. Terrence mentioned earlier family secrets and holding things in that will destroy your family mm-hmm. quicker than anything. Money too. <laughs> but that will destroy your family. You have got somebody's got to be there. A lot of times, uh, we think about roles in the family, right? Yeah. There are roles that exist. Uh, one that was always big in my family was my grandmother was the matriarch. Now I feel like mm-hmm. my aunt is kind of like the matriarch, right? So she passed that down. When that matriarch isn't there, though, somebody's got to be a leader. Somebody's got to say, "No, nah, we not just gonna let this miscommunication right. stand," you know. Because then that leads to confusion. No, we're going to have to get together. We're going to have to talk about some things. I, mm-hmm. Just to be transparent, that was a time in, in, you know, in my family when, you know, there was a lot of miscommunication going around. And that was the important thing was getting together. Let's talk about it. Let's have the hard conversations. Mm-hmm. That's what family is. That's what family is here for, right? Let's have these right. hard conversations. Uh-huh. And in having those conversations, sometimes it's important to understand each individual each individual's identity. So whether that's their zodiac sign, how does this person just naturally operate and communicate? Um, understanding, you know, parts of their identity. Is this the black sheep in the family or is this the golden child? Um, and then also understanding siblings, you know, mm-hmm. what relationship do two siblings have? Um, do all of the siblings have? And just understanding multiple dynamics um, that can play a factor in creating healthy boundaries and healthy communication within a family. Mm-hmm. And don't you be bougie. Don't you sit up there and act like you better than nobody. I'm going to say that. We have to, as family members, we have to, You, you got because you got to understand something. Whether you like it or not, your kids is going to be around their family, right, mm-hmm. at some point, right? So you should want to, you, you definitely want to, uplift those right who might be at a place of misunderstanding who might need some encouragement because ultimately they're going to affect your Mm -hmm. kids some kind of way they're going to affect the family some kind of way right Mm -hmm. and so as family members we got to be mindful to create an atmosphere right where people can feel comfortable talking and coming to us right so that's why i say don't you be bougie don't you feel like you better than nobody else because you're really going to turn people off Mm -hmm. right and that's going to come back on you down the line some kind of way um, it might be some of your nephews, sisters, cousins, whatever. They don't want to come to you because you're mean mm-hmm. or whatever because cause you uh, always got an attitude. <laughs> um, and, you know, you, you just have to you have to be mindful of that, right? I just think you have to be mindful of that. And what I'm hearing you say um, is something that I wanted to hit on earlier, but it slipped my mind, is that within a family bond, um, things should be reciprocated. You know, even though parents usually initiate um, a lot of changes and things that go on within the household, that um, love and that communication and that trust, those foundational things should be reciprocated with 
everyone inside the family. Even it comes down to the family dog. You know, the family dog or pet, they're there to show love, to add some excitement. Everyone in the family has a role to play, um, no matter the age. But things have to be reciprocated in some type of way. It can't be one-sided. And in my personal experience, I see that um, a bond within your family can be strengthened, strengthened, one, by being honest, but also by just reciprocating that communication. If I'm pouring into somebody, um, I don't mind them pouring into me as mm-hmm. well. You know, it's not one-sided. Um, if you're telling me, you know, you've had a long day, if my mom came home and she had a long day, how can I reciprocate and make her day easier? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, am I going to amplify things by making her day even more difficult or am I going to reciprocate some type of um, healthy energy and lessen that load for her? Yeah. Um, I think when we talk about roles in the family, I think about, you know, you have someone who might be the caretaker of the family. Mm-hmm. Right. And that doesn't necessarily have to be an adult. That could be a kid. Mm-hmm. Meaning um, the kid has to make sure that mom or dad or, or my brother and sister, they are okay. Right, so then you have the what we call the parentified child who are, takes on parental or parent duties, such as cooking, cleaning, you know, changing, you know, anything mm-hmm. that the parents supposed to do, but they can't because maybe they're at work, or maybe they're so depressed they can't get out of bed. But you have this child that takes in this step and takes in that um, takes responsibility of that role, right? And then now, what happens when they get older? They're so used to taking care of someone. Now, mm-hmm. guess what they're going to do? They're always going to take care of someone. All right, right? Or they're supposed to be the um, people pleaser. We talked about that in a previous episode. Or the golden child who has to be always be perfect, the perfectionist, and all these different things are different are burdens that I, mm-hmm. I like. To, I like to call them burdens that people carry. Things that they feel like they have to do, and if they don't do them, then something bad's going to happen, or they just feel lost. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when we're trying to create these different healthy, you know, families and healthy connections, we have to not we have to allow kids to be kids. Mm-hmm. I think that's very important. Mm-hmm. We can't be putting. Uh, kids in the middle of adult conversations. We can't be putting adult responsibilities on kids. Um, I feel like communicating with kids is very important. Mm -hmm. Communicating reasons why you're doing things on their level. And I'm not saying you have to automatically be like, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is why, but on their level to a way that they can understand it, being able to communicate with them and be able to teach them lessons because that's what you're there to do. So I wanted to highlight some ways that um, we can ap- actually strengthen family bonds. Um, some of those look like doing family activities, so eating dinner together. That's yeah. a simple um, a simple thing that families can incorporate into their um, weekly activities. And even if it's not dinner together every day, um, designate a day where you have family dinner. Uh, family movie nights, traveling together, cooking to- together, doing arts and crafts, um, and just doing family activities together um, that are intentional. You know, don't don't do things without intention. Oh, it's it's the Christmas season, so we're going to you know just put on matching pajamas. Let's have a conversation. What color matching pajamas do y'all want to wear this year? Mm-hmm. That can um, just develop that sense of identity and that communication within a family um, more than you even know yourself. Yeah. So, um, and you were bringing up like strengthening family bonds, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think another, how to do it. Yeah, I think another one is like celebrating each other, right? Oh, that's a celebrating. big one. Celebrating, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Even, um, I mean, because we celebrate holidays, but let's celebrate each other, right? When you mm-hmm. had a win at work, even if it was a small win, let's find a way to celebrate you, right? Right, that's so important. Let's find a way to celebrate each other, and let's uh, celebrate each other on our strengths, too, right? Mm-hmm. As we encourage each other on our weaknesses, I think it's very important. Um Another way to strengthen, I think, is empathy, mm. right? Empathy and respect. Empathy, um, when I say that, I'm thinking about, you know, thinking about what you're going through, right? And not judging what you're going through, mm-hmm. right? But being able to see it from a different perspective from, you know, it, it's your it's your challenge, right? Mm-hmm. It's not mine. However I would handle it, I can't put myself in your shoes, right? I've got to, I've got to love you, for one, and then I got to actually talk to you, or I got to actually right. care and see what do you need as you're on this journey, mm-hmm. as you're going through this. So showing empathy 
and um and reaching out to each other, man. Yeah. Reaching out like I, I like I, I hate that check because ins. check in, man. Right. I'm not always good at that. I, Me so, I, so I'm, I so I'm working on that. I'm, I admit yeah. working on that, brother. Um, because I want um I want my family to know I love my family and I right. want them to know friends too. I want them to know that I love them. So sometimes it's that checking in that's really important. Mm-hmm. Um, y'all got some because yeah, I was about to hop on what not to do. I can feedback off of that. Um, so I think reflecting is so important, too, as a family. Um, whenever you all go through something great um, and large together, reflect on it. And on the opposite end, whenever a family goes through something traumatic together, um, reflect on it, discuss it, see how we can improve um, from this traumatic event or even from this very positive event. Two people just got married. Let's talk about it. You know, let's yeah, let's talk about it. Let or somebody just passed away. Let's not just go to the funeral, come back home and eat fried chicken and let it be. Let's really talk about the life that this person lived. Um, and through this reflecting, the family is able to grow together. Matter of fact, I'm going to, something just came to my mind. So we talked about, um, you know, being on your healing journey. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about. A couple episodes ago. So yeah, y'all check into check that if into you that. haven't listened if you to have it not yet. Listened to yeah. it. Go check it. It was, it was great. So we talked about being on the healing journey. Mm-hmm. And when I think about that, I think of a quote. Because I always give y'all a good, a good old quote. This quote is, you you heard of, uh, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I'm going to add to it. It takes a village to raise a child, but who's raising the village? Mm. <laughs> Let's think about that. Let's get it. Let's think about that and break that down for a second. Break it so, down, yeah. It takes a village to raise a child. That extended family that I'm talking about, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. But then you have who's raising the village, <laughs> meaning right. if we're having, like the quote I told you probably a couple of episodes, go check that out too, hurt people hurt people. So if you have hurt people mm-hmm. raising the village, guess what you're going to raise? Hurt, hurt people. Mm-hmm. So it all goes together. And when I, why that is important with strengthening bonds is because communicating these so that you don't have the family secrets so you can understand the importance of mental health so you can understand the importance of having these strong relationships so you can go do these activities together so you can check in on each other so you can show people that I care about you and I want to create a safe and secure environment for you because that's all we want we want a safe and secure environment Mm -hmm. if you can provide that for kids or you can provide that for your uh, significant other they're going to show up for you and they're going to be authentic. Yes, and I think one major factor to this is appreciating someone else's input, um, no matter someone's age, you know. So if you all are planning something out and planning and processing things are so important as a family, but if you all are planning um, something important out, value everyone's opinion. You might not implement it, you know, if the five-year-old, the youngest child in the family um, has something to say about, you know, something you all are planning or wanting to do as a, a family, appreciate it, value it. Don't brush it off and say, oh, that that wouldn't that wouldn't work. That doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, or even on the opposite side, the um, oldest person, the elderly person, sometimes we tend to undervalue what they have to say because, you know, we're in our prime and all energetic. Um, but value everyone's opinion um, and process it. They brought Everybody you here. That. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They brought you here. So you're going to accept their opinion? Yeah, they're like, oh, oh that's yeah, just that's Granny that's over there granny, just talking. Granny, 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 granny knows, knows some fun. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Granny knows some stuff. You better yeah. listen, to Granny. <laughs> and But I, what I heard from that was people want to feel included. Mm-hmm. Right? Where you don't include or process with your family, then people feel excluded. And then they want to be like, but they will start to isolate themselves. Mm-hmm. They'll be like, I'm different. I'm the outcast. That's another role. The outlier. I'm the outlier, yeah. right? The scapegoat. That's what they call it, too. Mm-hmm. So I think that's very important. So what uh, I think what's important, too, is what not to do. What not to do, y'all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what not to do. One thing is assume. Yep. Assume like you know everything. Like you know about somebody's situation. Y'all might need to talk about it so you mm-hmm. really get clarity. Assume that you know what somebody was talking about when they were saying something. And you took it the wrong way, right? Mm-hmm. If we're a family, we love each other. We need clarity so we can move forward in the same direction. Don't be shaming people out here. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, we all done been through stuff, right? Who are you to shame me because what I done been through, right? right? Or to expose me, right, for, for what I'm going through or what I done been through. That's not family-like. Um, provoking, 
Mm-hmm. Provoking people Ooh, to anger. So right, right. It's some it's it's something you need to work on if you out here provoking people. Mm-hmm. Right. And um but I've seen it done. I've seen grown people provoke children, right? And that's not family life. And uh leaving room for ambiguity. I think is no room for uncertainty with what we're saying. Like let's be intentional about what we're saying, let's be direct. Um, because it's so cause because things just get jumbled up in there, right? Um, when you leave room for people to think whatever. Right. Let's let's say what we mean and um but yeah, I think th- those are some of the things what not to do. And I know we're wrapping up soon, but if you are in a family where some of those bonds have been dismantled, it's not too late to strengthen those it's bonds. Not, yeah. It's never too late to strengthen a family bond. Um the only time when it's too late is if a person has um passed away. You know, then it's too late. We have those regrets. Oh, I should have said this to this person. Oh, I've been holding this grudge against my relative for years. Mm. And, you know, now they gone and dead and gone. God forgive me. Let's not let's not um, let it get to that point. Mm-mm. You know, let's make those changes now. Um, our black community needs strong families. Mm-hmm. You know, we Come need on. strong families so that as a collective, we can grow as a race, as um, as a culture. So it starts within the household. Yeah. I love it. I love Which it. camera am I at? I love it. They right. both looking at you, bro. They both looking at me <laughs> right here. A lot of people will say, well, I don't know how to start. Mm. I don't know what to say. Okay. It all starts with one person making one phone call, one visit to start one conversation. That's all it takes, just one. And that one conversation could just be exactly how you feel. Mm. I have been feeling neglected because. Mm. I have been feeling frustrated because. That's how you start it. You just tell that person how you've been feeling and why. And that can open up the room for discussion, and hopefully y'all can have that discussion to build strengthening strengthening those bonds. And guess what? Some people are not always emotionally mature to handle handle those conversations. So what do you do after that? After that, so it, and again, I put, that's a good question that's because good. people say. Well, I went to go talk to them, Mm -hmm. and they didn't respond how I wanted them to respond. But then I asked them the question, did you go talk to them for them, or did you go talk to them for you? Mm. If you went to go talk to them for you, it doesn't matter how they responded. You gave them the opportunity to strengthen the relationship. If they don't want that relationship to be strengthened, that's their problem, not yours. Mm -hmm. Let's go. That's cool. And you should feel good about that. Man, we just here speaking with gravity. Yeah. That's, what, that's all we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> that's all we're doing. Shout a little word. <laughs> Go communicate with your family, man. Communicate yeah. that hurt, that love, everything. 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 Communicate it. And, yeah. and, and I understand that it can be frustrating, it can be scary to have these mm-hmm. conversations, but these conversations must be had. If you want to have those bonds and you want to create those lasting relationships within a family, within um, your own relationship, because that could be another part of your family, Mm -hmm. you have to have these conversations in order to do that. Family is everything. It's everything. I think that's good right there, y'all. I think we're going to go out with that. Find us um, on all platforms, Speaking With Gravity. Episode 68. Yeah, episode 68. You know, on social media, we're at Speaking With Gravity. You can find me at Garvey, the number four, prayers. Uh-oh. Yes, you can find me on Instagram at Hannah Elise, two underscores. And find me at Instagram at Terrence underscore Dawkins. Uh-huh. See y'all next time. Next time.